In this video, I'm going to take you through subtotals. Imagine you have a huge data set from which you would like to derive totals for portions of your data. For example, in a table with sales data, country and salesperson, you would like to determine total sales generated by each country and also total sales generated by each salesperson. If you're not familiar with subtotals command, you could spend hours trying to figure this out. You could end up adding sales data for each country individually and do the same process for salesperson. This could be very confusing and error prone. Therefore, it is crucial to be familiar with the subtotal command. Subtotal helps you find sum of filtered values. It summarizes the data and generates sum or count or average or standard deviation. And in fact, it has about 11 functions to choose from. In subtotal, you can choose the column on which to base your subtotal on. You can also choose the summary calculation or function that you want to perform. And you can also choose the column or columns with values that needs to be summed or counted or averaged based on the column specified. Excel calculates subtotal for portions of your data by grouping rows of related data together. It automatically inserts subtotal and total in the table. As you notice that grouping is important in this activity. To correctly group data, it is imperative that the data is sorted by the column or columns you wish to subtotal. Subtotals can go horribly wrong if the data is not sorted correctly. If you would like to learn how to sort and filter data, you can visit our other videos. Now let's go through an example to understand subtotals. Let's say we want to introduce subtotals in this particular table. We want a major subtotal by country and minor subtotal by salesperson based on total order amount. So in a nutshell, we want to see what is the total order amount by country. And in that, we want to be able to tell what is the total order amount by each salesperson. So let's see how we can do that. Let's go ahead and click on Data tab. And then under Outline, let's go ahead and click on Subtotal. Once we have that, then at each change in, I'm going to select Country because that's our first level of subtotal and I want to be able to sum the order amount so I'm going to click on sum and add subtotal to I want to add it to order amount so I'm going to check that box and I'm going to uncheck order ID I do not want to replace any subtotals so I'm just going to go ahead and click OK and let's go ahead and see if the subtotal has been introduced yes it has been introduced because you can see 1, 2 and 3 so if I click on 2 this is where the subtotal has been introduced. You can see total order amount of UK is approximately $330,000 and US has an order amount of $894,000 approximately. So this is our first level of subtotal. Now we are going to introduce our second level of subtotal which is by salesperson. So now let's go ahead and click on data tab and under outline let's go ahead and click on subtotal. We want to see the change at salesperson level. So I'm going to select salesperson from the drop down list. I want to be able to see the sum of the order amount. So I'm going to let that remain as it is. I'm not going to select replace current total because I do not want to replace any total. And I'm going to go ahead and click OK. You can see now this has increased to 1, 2, 3 and 4. So if I click on third, this is my minor subtotal level and my major subtotal level is country and we also have a grand total. Now let's say we want to be able to introduce total number of orders completed by each salesperson. It does not mean we want to see the total order amount by each salesperson but we want to see the total number that is the count of orders completed by each salesperson which is obviously the count of order IDs by each salesperson. So let's go to the data tab again, click on subtotal and at each change in salesperson is fine. We want to be able to use the function count. We want to be able to count the number of order IDs for each salesperson and we want to add subtotal to order ID level. So I'm going to check that box. I do not want to replace any subtotals, so I'm just going to click OK. And here you have your count introduced for each salesperson. So we can see 
bill has 42 orders and total amount of those orders is approximately $68,000. So this may not be the best way of representing this data, but it still gives me total order IDs and the total order amount for each salesperson and for the country as well. Hope this was useful. This video was brought to you by CXO Learning Academy, a premier learning initiative by CXO Math. For any queries, you can email us at learning at cxomath.com. Thank you.